I'm Cami Utman, Vice President for Avenus World Radio at the General Conference. I am super excited to be with you tonight. Only a few months ago, friend, our world was completely a different place. Since then, we have been in the midst of a global shutdown, a worldwide pandemic. We are living in uncertain times. As people are still afraid about the effect it has made, people fear for themselves and for their loved ones. We have all seen the stock markets crash. Potential economic disaster might be just around the corner. Riots have been popping up around the nations, and you may be afraid of what the future holds. Our minds are flooded with unanswered questions. Will the economy collapse? Will I be able to feed my family or have a place to live? What's next? Bible prophecy clearly reveals God's plan for the future. Friends, I believe we are now in that future. What does he expect from us in times like these? Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, King of the universe, King of our hearts, thank you for bringing all of your precious people together at this camp meeting, Lord, in such a magnificent way. May we learn something new about you and what you expect of us in times like these. In Jesus' precious, powerful name, amen. I love that our Heavenly Father gives us prophetic warnings not to scare us, but to prepare us. He does not leave us in the dark, ever. God desires for us to put our full trust in His Word. In Matthew 24, Jesus lays out the many signs that we will see right before He comes again. And when you read that list of verses, you see these prophecies are being fulfilled before our very eyes today. The final sign will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that indeed we are living in the very last days of this world's history. And what is it? Let's read in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is the final sign. Then in Revelation 14, 6, it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Friends, this is our calling in times like these. God's message is going forward. In my travels with Avenus World Radio, my small video crew and I document miracles in the most remote corners of this world. In Habakkuk 1.5, it says this. God says this. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. God is doing exactly that right now. Shocking things. Things you would never imagine could be possible. These are the experiences that I'm going to share with you tonight. God is reaching the unreachable. I was there to witness it all with my own eyes and see firsthand how God has no walls, no borders, and no limits. Let me show you what I mean. Come with me to the Philippine Islands. Here we find a group of terrorist rebels hidden throughout the mountaintops. For the past 49 years, they have been protecting and dominating these areas with guerrilla warfare. They call themselves the New People's Army, or the NPA. These men and women are determined to overthrow the government. Over 40,000 locals have died in this war between the NPA and the government military troops. These mountain natives have traditionally been pagans. Each family is only allowed to have three children. If a fourth child is born, that child is immediately buried alive. This is a culture where 13-year-olds are forced to marry, and men can pay 400 Philippine pesos to swap wives. This is equal to about $8 in U.S. currency. Like all of us, these people need Jesus and his life-saving principles. Less than three years ago, Avenus World Radio began broadcasting Bible messages from the coastal cities to the jungle mountaintops. And some of the NPA rebels tuned in to this Christian station 
and became intrigued. As they listened to the stories of Jesus' love, their hearts were softened. One of the top commanders sent four of his soldiers to find the radio broadcaster and bring him to their remote camp. They did just that. Let's watch what happened. Find out how AWR Radio has gone past the steel cold guns straight into the hearts of ruthless rebels. This is AWR 360. On the island of Manduro in the Philippines, Along with the broadcasts, many meetings took place, and more than 2,000 were baptized. Then soon after, over 77 new villages turned their lives over to the Lord as the layman radio hosts kept preaching. But then some of the new listeners made a surprise visit to one of our AWR radio broadcasters, Robert Dulai. As he was biking home one day, he saw four strangers at his front door. They told him they were rebels. On March 29, 1969, the New People's Army was formed. Armed with weapons, they gradually infiltrated the country. Their goals have been to overthrow the government and establish a Maoist-style communist regime. They regularly ambush police and military forces. Are these men and women to be feared for their brutality, to be rejected and abandoned? Or is God calling his faithful to go out into the highways and byways to preach there too? They pleaded with us to send someone to the village to preach, as they had been listening to the radio and wanted to know more about Jesus. It is now four months later. AWR 360 is heading to the Forbidden Mountain area, in the midst of where these rebels live. Where Jesus went, he often healed those around him. In like manner, we are bringing in a team of medical laymen who are committed to following God's healing message across the Philippines. Helping take the medical supplies to the staging point is the Philippine military, the 4th Division's Scorpion Unit. Seeing the good work that AWR has done in reaching the rebel soldiers, they put forth their full support of what we are doing. They load the supplies, and before we head out, we have a prayer. AWR, the medical layman, and the military, all praying hand in hand to our God for his blessing in what we are about to do. Finally, after a long and difficult drive, we reach the staging point. As we wait, we notice many porters coming down the trail. They will help carry the supplies the rest of the way up the mountain. This will be a long trip with a very heavy load. Some of the porters are members of the rebel group. Once again, we have a prayer. And then the supplies are loaded for the journey ahead. We say goodbye to the layman and the villagers as they make their way up the trail. It will be a tiresome trek through the jungles, rivers, and mud. It will take at least eight hours for some to reach the village. For others, it will be an overnight walk. The next morning, we board a small mission helicopter, and it takes us to the top of the mountain. I smile as I relive God's miracles and how he reached the rebellious, militant-minded soldiers that we were about to meet face to face. As the helicopter comes to a halt, I look at the crowd gathered before us. They are lit with smiles. We are welcomed and the natives eagerly give us a tour. It's amazing to see how these precious people live. Then I sit down with Efren, the first one who started listening to AWR. My life was always on edge. and I did many things I would rather not talk about. But one day, as I was listening to the radio, something different came on. It was AWR's health program. As I listened, I discovered that these people were helping many with their health problems. They also talked about the supreme healer, one whose life was devoted to others rather than himself. This thought appealed to him, and he felt the need to share it with others. 
Then he began to wonder, who are these people who are sharing this loving message? He knew he had to find out for himself. I had to know more, so I sought out the speaker of this program. I sent fellow members of my unit to invite him to the mountaintop. The road they took down many times had been used to hurt or injure, but this time it was different. My friends asked him, please come preach to us in the mountains. As they met, Ephron shared how he has a desire to learn more about Jesus. And AWR 360 was happy to oblige. Many layman pastors also climbed the mountain to preach. And soon many new rebels heard about God through the radio and Bible studies. And they too had the need to share it with others. And then the day came when Ephraim himself walked down the mountain with one final request. I want to be baptized, and so do many others. And so, on top of this once dangerous mountain, layman doctors healed those who were sick, and the mouths were cleaned by the volunteer dentists. Our AWR 360 team spoke with many villagers and prayed with many more. Additional rebels arrived because they were interested in witnessing what was going on. Our team preached to them, and then it was time to baptize those who had made their decision for Christ. It was a joyous walk to the baptismal site, and I believe all of heaven was rejoicing with us as we watched Pastor McKee baptize five rebel generals, along with 60 other soldiers. These men who were once killers in the land have now died to self. They have laid down their earthly weapons and exchanged them for a heavenly reward. What I witnessed today was truly a miracle. In one of the most dangerous places on earth, Avenus World Radio boldly went forth so yearning ears could hear the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus. Lives were changed for eternity, and now many more have a new hope of heaven forever. On that day alone, our team witnessed the baptisms of 60 rebel soldiers and five of their top generals. And that was just the beginning. There has been hundreds more since. The latest number? Get this. I just checked with Pastor Dulai in the Philippines, and God's truth has now been taken over uh, to 118 villages. These terrorists have laid down their AK-47 guns in exchange for a Bible and a new life in Christ. Many of them have learned a new trade, like farming and selling goods in the outdoor markets while sharing their new way of life. My video crew and I had the opportunity to film several of their personal testimonies and recreate them into short documentary films. I want to tell you about one of them right now because I cannot resist sharing Daniel's testimony. His father was a commander in the NPA, and his uncle and cousins also had joined the troops. Daniel grew up through the ranks. It was the only life that he knew. At age 13, he killed for the very first time. Soon after, he was given the important title, the executioner. He became really good at killing and was promoted to the lead hitman throughout all of the Philippines. He told us that he cannot even count the number he has killed, as there have been too many. From politicians to military soldiers, policemen, and local criminals, the more he killed, the more numb inside he became, never wanting to remember their faces. But one day, he was given a termination order for a Christian pastor. Abducting the pastor, he isolated him in the forest jungle, and the pastor was begging for his life. Even though Daniel was stunned by the kindness in this man's eyes, he pulled the trigger. 
You see, Daniel always completed his killing assignments. He was known for getting the job done. But Daniel could not forget the pastor's face and the memory tormented him. He could find no rest. NPA soldiers are allowed to leave their hidden posts to go home to their families for three days every two months. So the next time Daniel entered his house, he heard a radio playing loudly. His wife and children were listening to a Christian Bible program. He recognized the station as Avenist World Radio. And because he knew other NPA comrades who were listening to that very same station and had given up fighting and were baptized. But this was the first time he really listened. Daniel heard stories about a loving savior who would leave his 99 sheep and go out in search of the one that was lost. Daniel's heart was moved by what he heard. And in that moment, he understood that he was one of the lost sheep. His heart softened and Daniel and his wife took Bible studies and were baptized along with four more generals of the NPA. Daniel is now on a mission to share Jesus with thousands of other NPA troops in the Jungle Mountains so they too can have better lives filled with peace and the hope of life eternal. Even executioners are coming to Jesus in times like these. Now, in one of those remote villages, high up in the mountaintops, lives an influential pagan chief by the name of Perfecto. Spiritualism and local lore were his way of life. Sometimes people would visit the village and try to convert him to Christianity. But what they said was different from what they practiced, and the confusion annoyed him. He would tell them, go away. Then he would find comfort in his prized possession, his radio. He only listened to one station because it played the music that he liked. One day, after his favorite song ended, a new program came on which caught his attention. The broadcaster was talking about the seventh day Sabbath as the true day of worship. Well, this was new to him and was different from what other Christians that annoyed him had professed. Happily, he went to the Sunday keepers in his village and he proudly proclaimed, you guys have been worshiping on the wrong day. Well, this pagan chief was shocked he did not anticipate the response he got. Perfecto thought he had outwitted his neighbors, but something unexpected happened. They showed a genuine interest in what he shared. The next day, the whole village showed up to their pagan chief's home to listen to his radio with him. Everyone loved the program so much that it became a daily gathering. Perfecto became convicted he was convinced that what he was hearing was the truth. He sought out the radio broadcaster and informed him that his whole village wanted to be baptized, all 77 of them. The Bible truth not only changed his life, but the lives of his entire village. I'll never forget seeing Perfecto coming up out of the baptismal water, raising his hands towards heaven along with 1,400 additional souls who had joined him in the ocean, giving their lives to Christ. Isn't it exciting to live in times like these? God is doing something spectacular. He is calling out to all his lost sheep. Now come with me to Zambia, a country in Southern Africa, where my three videographers and I entered the highest maximum security prison in all of the country. As soon as we entered, they confiscated our camera equipment and put us in a holding room. The guards on duty were not aware of our invite and told us that no media is ever allowed inside their prison walls. But once they confirmed that we were Avenus World Radio, they escorted us onto their prison grounds. This was unprecedented. We had a chance to worship and pray with these convicted felons. You could tell that their hardened hearts had become softened. God had already been bringing his gospel truth 
to these prisoners through the radio airwaves into their jail cells. The prison averages around 2,400 inmates, and get this, over 1,150 of them are now baptized Seventh-day Adventists. Can you believe it? Out of the 250 death row prisoners, more than 50 have accepted Jesus. That's a lot of the prison who are now Bible-believing, Jesus-loving, peace-filled Christians. They have the hope in Jesus. Even Zambia's general commissioner met with us to express his appreciation for AWR changing the atmosphere of his prison camp. Hallelujah! Isn't God incredible? He is reaching the unlikelies in the deepest, darkest corners of this earth. That's what Jesus does in times like these. The gospel brings eternal hope even to these inmates on death row today. Now, during this trip, when we were visiting the prison in Zambia, AWR had over 1,070 evangelistic sites. Yeah, a thousand of these were just in the capital city of Lusaka alone. This has never happened before. And at the end of three weeks, 18,000 were baptized. Isn't that amazing? Matthew 24, 14 is coming true, friends. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. People are hungry for the straight truth from the Bible. No matter their culture or where they live, it is a human desire to need the Lord. Now, in times like these, it is possible for the gospel to leap, literally leap across all barriers through radio, television, and the internet just like we are doing here together tonight, right now. Many people can receive text messages and biblical presentations right on their cell phones. God is reaching people in every way possible, from remote villages to barren deserts, to wealthy homes and gated communities, from maximum security prisons to the cities with their teeming masses. The gospel is going forth in remarkable ways. Millions are being stirred as never before with a sense of urgency. Times are changing. Millions are turning from the uncertainty of this world to seek for a better world to come. Many have sacrificed all to take the gospel to the far regions of this world. God is on the move. He is doing something special. He is fulfilling prophecy. We are on the verge of the kingdom tonight, friends. Let's travel now together to the island of Madagascar, off the coast of Africa. There it is flooded with blatant spiritualism. Ranja was dedicated as a baby to the devil. And as she grew, evil spirits dominated everything in her life. She became a witch and excelled in supernatural powers and status. These spirits enabled Ranja to be able to stop bullets and produce medicines for healing the sick. She became very popular and very wealthy. She would even dive down to the bottom of a river to meet with the spirits and commune with them for days without coming up for air. This was not a happy life for Ranja, but a torturous one. One day, Overhearing two people talk about the one almighty God, Ranja became intrigued. She questioned these two people because she thought her gods were the most powerful. As she began listening to AWR radio programs to learn more, the spirits were furious with her. She attempted to disconnect from them. Strangely, however, when the radio played Avenus messages and Christian music, they left and never returned. Ranja was once known as a witch throughout the land, but is now known as a powerful Bible evangelist. You know, we are told that in the end times, spiritualism will become more and more prevalent, but not just in Africa, but all over this planet. We are warned to stay away from such practices. It is not innocent fun, friends. God warns us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
Don't think that Satan doesn't know Bible prophecy. He knows it better than humans. Even the devil worshipers know that it is the midnight hour. My colleague Sue and I were on an early flight from Palm Springs to Denver. It was a very small plane. And I sat down next to a very distinguished looking businessman. He introduced himself as Nick with a lovely British accent. He shared that he was flying to one of his homes in Colorado at a popular ski resort. After we exchanged some pleasantries, I simply commented, wow, God has really blessed you. I saw his whole body grimace. He retorted, no, the goddess has. Hmm. Next, a two hour friendly but frank conversation took place. Nick had devoted his life to goddess worship at a young age. He told me point blank, Christians are the enemy, which makes you my enemy. We are on opposing sides, for I am a soldier of the goddess. Well, I turned to him and said, I am the soldier for the one almighty God. You are not my enemy, Nick. Satan is. The Bible tells us who wins this war. Now, my friend Sue was only two rows ahead of me and overheard our conversation and began to pray. Praise God for prayer warriors. Now, years ago, Nick continued, the goddess gave me step-by-step -step instructions on building my software company for this fight. She has made it, me very wealthy and successful. And since I gave myself over to her in my childhood, I've had no choice but to follow her directions. Nick and I went on to discuss free will, what happens at death, the truth about apparitions and Satan's deceptions. I shared my view of a loving, mighty, personal God who protects and provides. Whereas he described his view of God as a tormentor and fiercely cruel. He shared many pieces of his life with me, including how dead family members appear to speak with him. I shared from the Bible how the dead know not anything, how evil angels impersonate and harass. I said, Nick, only God can rid you of this torment. Why don't you fall on your knees and ask him to prove himself to you? Because he will. He's real and cares about you, Nick. Give him a try. Nick divulged, I have been training my whole life to annihilate the Christians, and it's positioned to happen soon. The goddess is about to emerge and rise up from the earth. Friends, we are in the center of the great controversy battle right now, with little time left on this earth. Even goddess worshipers know time is short. I responded to Nick, yes, I believe that Bible prophecy tells us that some of those who stand for Bible truth will be persecuted before Jesus returns. But at the second coming, believers will receive eternal life in heaven with perfect bodies, and there's no more pain or suffering. I said, Nick, what is your end game? He appeared stunned and became silent. Then finally admitted, the goddess has never revealed that to me. I will need to ask her. Nick was increasingly intrigued with what he described as a warm glow around me. He said, I don't understand. While we have been talking, you have been exuding a glow around you, and there's like a rod of strength within you. I looked at him in the eyes and I said, Nick, that's Jesus and you can have him too. You know, after that flight, I called my dad and my dad reminded me of page 612 in the Great Controversy where it says this, Servants of God with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven by thousands of voices all over the earth the warning will be given. Our God instructs us in Isaiah 58, 1, that we are to have voices like trumpets, to loudly proclaim his name, his truth, 
We are not to hold back or be afraid of sharing His gospel message. My friends, God empowers you. He has chosen you to be His ambassadors to your beautiful country. Today, I want to encourage you to be bold in Jesus. Stand up for Him. The Holy Spirit will give us the power to reach every soul. Do you believe that He is mighty enough to do that? I want you to look in Ephesians 3, verses 20 to 21. Let's look together. Now to God, our King of the universe, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Friends, I want you to think big. I want you to ask God for big because as big as you think and ask, God can do exceedingly abundantly more. Believe in His power. Believe in His ability, His desire to shine through you, because that is when miracles happen, just like the ones I've been telling you about. We are God's light bearers. In Testimonies, Volume 5, it says, God has called His church in this day, in times like these, as He has called ancient Israel to stand as light in the earth. Jesus specifically commands us to go, preach, teach, and baptize. So how powerful is our God? How mightily can His work through humans affect the planet when we adhere to His will? Page after page in the Bible, we read of incredible examples. When people stand up for the truth, and are faithful in following the Lord's lead, they are greatly rewarded. Let's look at a favorite Bible story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho falling down. It is recorded in Joshua 6, 1 through 27. This example vividly demonstrates the miraculous power of God when His people follow His direction. The strategy to conquer Jericho was unique and laid out by God Himself. The key was that Joshua followed his instructions to the letter. Jericho was one of the strongest fortresses in the area. Wealthy palaces and temples of luxury, vice, and idol worship dominated the land. This was all in defiance of the God of Israel. So Christ appeared to Joshua and promised victory over this impenetrable city. In direct obedience to the divine command, Joshua marshaled the armies. They were instructed that no assault was to be made. You see, God's plan was to use the most unexpected, innocent method of operation. His ways are not always our ways. God does use surprises and catches people off guard. In this incident, God simply used feet and voices. When the people did finally shout, the massive walls collapsed instantly. Do you realize that God had given them the victory before they even began to march? That's found in Joshua 6, 2, and 16. It was when the people of God by faith followed the commands of God that the walls of solid stone with their massive towers tottered and heaved from their very foundations and with a crash, fell in ruin to the ground. The Apostle Paul assures us in Romans 15, 4, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Obedience to God's commands brings victory, friends. When we face something or something seemingly insurmountable, insurmountable odds, we must learn that our Jericho victories are won only when we are faithful. There is a vast difference between God's way and man's way. From a military standpoint, it was irrational to storm Jericho with simple marching and trumpet blasts. But we need never to question God's purpose or instructions. 
we must have faith that God is who he says he is and will do what he says he will do. There is an uncompromising relationship between God's grace and our faith. Hebrews 11.30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. Historically, their faith had frequently wavered, but in this moment, the children of Israel believed and trusted in God's promises. They were saved by faith, and so are we. Yet faith must be evidenced by obedience. A saving faith impels us to obey God. This story beautifully illustrates how God keeps His every promise, always has, always will. The walls of Jericho fell because God said they would. God's promises to us today are just as certain, friends. They are exceedingly great and wonderfully precious. The Israelites had not gained the victory by their own power, no, but wholly by God. It was impressed upon Israel that in the conquest of Canaan, they were not to fight for themselves, but simply be instruments in the will of God. What is the will of our heavenly King today? Just like Joshua, we are to lift up our trumpets and be his instruments to complete his will. Jesus is coming soon and has commissioned us to go preach, teach, and baptize every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Jesus wants you to reach the precious souls of your neighbors and communities. Friends, we must do our part by proclaiming his straight testimony. What is straight testimony? In Last Day Events, on page 45, it says, In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers, to them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Amen? There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. End quote. So what work is the most important? Proclaiming the three angels' messages. And why is that? Because it is to be the last warning to this dying world. Well, wait, let's think about who doesn't want our world warned? The enemy of God, Satan. He feverishly builds up walls and places roadblocks in the way of us spreading the gospel. But these barriers, borders, and obstacles tumble down just like the walls of Jericho when we call on the power of Jesus. With God as our leader, the gospel truly has no limits. Right now, there are people around this world needing hope, looking for a savior. Because of this weighty capacity, we are compelled to carry out the Great Commission. My friends, we as Christians know there is only one perfect Christ crucified, one empty tomb, one risen Redeemer who is coming back soon. I want to really be vulnerable with you right now. I know where many of you are coming from. Does the Great Commission feel overwhelming to you personally? I know that it, I, I know that it, once felt paralyzing to me. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into my spiritual walk. You see, I had spent many years intently focused on worldly pursuits and not spiritual things. I am so grateful that Jesus never stops wooing and pursuing each one of us. Once I truly fell in love with him, I had the urge to share my joy with everyone, but I was so nervous scared, even speechless. I remember one of the first times I decided to push through my fear and at least be open to maybe witnessing to a stranger. Truly, on one hand, I prayed, Lord, please use me. 
And on the other hand, I am thinking, mm, please don't bring anybody my way today because I'm not ready. I don't know what to say. Okay, so several years ago, I was the last to board onto a Southwest plane. There are no assigned uh, seats on this airline. So the only seat left on the entire plane was a middle seat at the very front. I could immediately see why no one sat there. A huge, massive man, meaning tall, seven feet tall, was absorbing most of this space. He was listening to his headphones behind dark sunglasses and was covered in tattoos. As I squeezed in beside him, I could smell alcohol. I wasn't even thinking about witnessing at this point. But when the beverage cart came by, this young man took his headphones off to ask for a drink, and this broke the silence. He turned and passed me my sparkling water, and we exchanged a few words. I prayed, Lord, if you want me to share something, then make it possible. And then he asked, what is your purpose of your trip? Okay, here's my chance. It's now or never. Um, I'm on my way to a Bible conference. I could not believe this piqued his interest. Oh, really? What do you believe about the Bible? Oh, yikes, I thought to myself. So I began to share what little I knew. And friends, let me tell you, let me just say this. If you, if, if we sh want, wait to share until we think we are ready with every answer to every question, we will never share anything. Be assured, God will give you the words. Or you simply say, that's a great question. I need to study that more myself. Just be honest. As this towering man listened to my inexperienced sharing, I was stunned to see a small tear begin to stream down from under his sunglasses and slowly roll down his cheek. He revealed the biggest surprise to me. He said, from what you are sharing, I know you are a Seventh-day Adventist. My heart stopped. Well, yes, I replied. He continued, as a child, I attended Adventist schools, but left it long ago. I have been feeling so lost and empty. I know God sat you next to me today. And as we stood up to retrieve our overhead luggage, he requested, will you pray for me? Yikes, another thing that I was scared of, praying out loud? I felt so exposed and visible to everyone around me, but thought, okay, Lord, help. As this seven foot man and I made our way off the plane, we were suddenly in the center of the airport terminal. And because he towers over everyone, he drew the immediate attention of every single person passing by, as he is at least a foot taller than everyone else. I was not comfortable with praying out loud at this point in my life, let alone in front of the eyes of staring crowds. But I said, okay, Lord, and I went for it. We stood facing each other, closed our eyes, and prayed to the King of the universe to draw us closer to him and his truth. I will never forget the moment my prayer finished. And we opened our eyes filled with tears, and we stared for a brief moment at each other, realizing God had done something really special for both of us that day. I look forward to seeing my gentle giant friend in the kingdom of heaven. When we stay open to the Holy Spirit's leading, he will prompt us to witness. And we must trust in our God who is mighty enough to keep his every promise. Promises like he will speak through you when you have no words. Ever since this experience, I claim Matthew 10, 20. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks through you. It is in these moments that we open ourselves up to the highest experiences on this earth, being used for and by the divine power of the universe. Don't miss out on such opportunities. 
you will be blessed not only on earth, but as a reward in heaven. A pastor in Tanzania encouraged his members to use a Christian radio program as a witnessing tool to share the messages with their friends and family. So Mama Miembe took this to heart and began carrying her little radio with her wherever she went. Now, Mama Miembe had a garden located by the town's bar. Daily, as she tended to her plants and vegetables, she set down her radio and turned the volume up. Inside the nearby bar, the owner began to listen and take interest. He became so intrigued with what he heard coming from the radio in the garden, he decided to find the channel on his own radio so he could hear it better. While serving his customers, he listened intently to the broadcasts. And soon, he was not the only one listening. The drunkards who daily came by sat down and started to listen and ask questions. Finally, they all agreed to meet together and listen to the radio instead of drinking alcohol. The owner and his customers daily met in the bar with their Bibles and radio. As the Adventist World Radio program presented Bible-based messages, straight truth, the men discovered precious, precious truths they had never heard before. After a few weeks, the owner decided to give his life to Jesus. He was baptized, along with 20 of his customers. It was a joyous day. After their baptism, this new little congregation decided to change their bar into a place of worship. They meet together every Sabbath to sing praises and study the Bible. And Mama Miembe often joins them with a heart full of joy for what God was able to do through her witnessing. A place of frivolity and drunkenness is now a place of praise and worship to our Creator. These men heard the truth, confirmed it in their Bible, and committed to following it. It can be as easy as that. People whose hearts are opened are quickly accepting truths. It doesn't have to take years. Jesus is coming. What an amazing testimony to the power of the gospel shining through one woman's daily devotion to share truth. And this was without her even speaking one word. Friends, allow yourself to be used by Him, and He will. With your willing heart, God can make miracles happen. I believe we have but a short window of opportunity to reach hearts that are currently open. With all the crises happening, the world is primed tonight. People are craving truth that they can put their wholehearted trust in. They need to know who they can bank their eternal lives on, Jesus Christ only. Let's not feed them watered down processed food. Let's have them feast on the nourishing, hearty word of God. We know the gospel satisfies the hungering soul. I encourage you to invite every person the Lord brings to your mind. As a member of this church, a believer in Jesus Christ, a Seventh-day Adventist. This is your personal role God has assigned you right now. What an incredible witnessing tool He has provided. It will take all of us working together in many different capacities to finish the work, but we can do it. Not all of us are evangelists or pastors or teachers, but we all have the capacity to do something. It only took Mama Miembe to turn the radio dial and turn up the volume. Remember, there are no starless crowns in heaven. Imagine that you have just reached the sea of glass for the very first time. You are stunned by the beauty and peace that surrounds you. And as your eyes gaze out over the sparkling water, you hear someone calling your name. An angel is guiding a group of people towards you. And as they approach, you see tears streaming down their smiling faces. You do not recognize them all, but each of them begins thanking you for sharing Jesus with them. And because of you, 
they chose heaven. Let us not be ashamed of our king or be concerned about being peculiar. Every person who makes God the ruler of their life in this world will be considered peculiar. But this is the faith we need. This is the experience that we must have. We must stand out from the world right now and be different if we are to be the sons and daughters of God, the heirs of heaven. The whole universe is watching you with inexplicable interest as the closing scenes of the great controversy come to pass. What decision will you make? Who will you share God's saving truth with in times like these? What is more important than being loyal? Loyal to and witnessing for our Redeemer. All through the ages, God has had moral heroes and he has them now. Those like Joshua, who were not ashamed to be his peculiar people. Now believers from around the world are standing up for Jesus at all costs, even at the risk of their own lives. The Seventh-day Adventist movement is the only church spreading God's end time message, his three angels messages in full, the everlasting gospel in its entirety throughout the whole world just as Jesus commands us to do. We must stand up for all God's truth. As his remnant people, we must live a life of prayer, Bible study, and witnessing to others. We need to be the generation of believers who are not ashamed of the gospel. We need a spirit-filled army of believers that hate to be lukewarm and will stand on God's holy word above all else. This generation needs to proclaim salvation is in Jesus' name alone. Amen? We need to understand the incredible power in prayer. Friends, prayer is an act of war. Our communication with Jesus is our armor, our shield in this great controversy battle. We need to learn to fight on our knees. We must have the kind of personal relationship with Jesus that will help us through the upcoming trials. We know that they are just ahead. Let's do our very best to represent Jesus and share his words of salvation to others today. Please understand that God has called you for such a time as this. If you have ever doubted your Adventism, doubt it no more. Stop sitting on the fence. Satan wants you to believe your doubts and doubt your beliefs. No matter what you've done, Jesus has more than enough mercy to cover you. Jesus will finish what he started in you long ago as a child. Just ask him. All he needs is permission and he will come in to fill your life so that you can fill others with hope in him. Our God is able He's more than capable to keep his every promise. Only the Lord knows how many countless lives will be touched by your living example and your words of witnessing hope and truth. In times like these, lift up your trumpets, loud let it ring, Jesus is coming again. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, May each one attending this general conference camp meeting personally petition, I will go. Lord, use us mightily in these last days to spread your three angels' messages. I pray that we are your generation of believers that are not ashamed of your truth. May we draw our courage from your precious promises and not compromise under pressure, but proclaim you to the whole world. I pray for unity among those that love you. Prepare, strengthen, and sustain us. May we as Seventh-day Adventists lift you up so high that all who look to you will see their Savior, their Redeemer, their Eternal King. I pray these things with all my heart. In Jesus' precious, most powerful name, amen.